Lakewood means rewind, a gunshot means forward. You requested it, so we rewind. Search. Yeah. Wait, hey guys, wait, it's Sorogo wait. on search, D. Search, Let's search, go ahead and jump into a lumbar spine MRI. This is my search pattern. So how do I start things off? I basically start off by labeling the L5-S1 level. I'm basically going to pick this to be the L5 and this the S1 level. So I have L5, L4, L3, L2, and L1. I basically start off looking at the alignment. I'm basically looking at each vertebral body, making sure it lines up perfectly with the vertebral body above it. And there should be a nice gentle curvature to the lumbar spine, the lumbar lordosis. I'm basically looking for any slippage or anterolisthesis or retrolisthesis. I then start looking at each vertebral body, looking for any height loss, basically looking at the relationship between the vertebral body and the intervertebral disc, looking for any loss of height or compression. I basically then start using the stir imaging, looking for any high signal in the vertebral body or the ligaments that surround the vertebral body, looking for any evidence for acute injury. I then move on to the T1 weighted imaging. I'm looking for loss of this marrow signal, which could be the case if there's a metastatic infiltration or leukemic process, or any sort of systemic anemia. I then move back and look between the vertebral bodies, looking at the discs. The high signal that you see in these discs is due to the nucleus pulposus and the water content of that. I'm basically looking for that loss of that signal, which would indicate disc desiccation or drying out of the disc, or loss of this disc volume. I then move on to the cord. Basically look at the cord, I'm looking for any masses within the cord, or any enlargement within the cord, or looking for any abnormal signal within the cord. And I'm basically looking at the cord and how it terminates into the cauda equina. I can use the axial images to help me find the termination, the conus. So here's my conus, and that's going to be at the 5, 4, 3, 2, the L1 level. Then I basically look at the nerve roots on the axial. As I trace these nerve roots down, they should be fairly separate from one another, floating in the CSF sac. There shouldn't be any evidence of arachnoiditis or inflammatory process involving these nerve roots. And at this point, I'm basically ready to go level by level. I basically find myself at an intervertebral disc level. I'm basically looking at the disc on the axial. More or less, I'm looking at the posterior margin of the disc. It should have this concave nature where it's concave forward. When this posterior aspect of the disc contour starts to round out, that's the first sign of a disc bulge, so I'm looking for that. I'm looking at this fecal sac, which is the fluid-filled sac, which contains the cauda equina nerve roots. So it should have this round configuration looking for any narrowing of this central canal region, looking for anything else that will cause narrowing, such as ligamentum flavum hypertrophy, or any facet enlargement. I'm also looking at this triangular structure here, which is the epidural fat. I'm looking for that to see if it's impinging on the central canal or causing stenosis. Once I've looked at the central canal for stenosis, I move on to the neural canals, which are to either side of the central canal. It's very nice to see this actually on the T1 sagittal, I can scroll out here laterally and you can see now I can see a very nice neural canal here with the nerve centrally and it's surrounded by fat on all sides so there's no stenosis here and then I basically move on and do the other side and I can look at the nerve here and the surrounding fat and the neural canal I basically do this at every level and when I'm done with that I'm basically done looking at the lumbar spine I hope this video was helpful and please subscribe and let me know what other type of content you'd like to see once again I'm Sorogar MD thank you for watching